And let me grab a call because it's right in line with what we're talking about. It's Rita in Jacksonville, Florida. How are you doing, Rita? I'm glad you called. Okay, yes. Thank you for taking my call, Mr. Limbaugh. Yes. Yeah, I have an old-fashioned flip phone, and I was trying to get through to you for weeks, so I thought it was impossible. But it was worth it because I really enjoy listening to your show. I've been listening for five years now. Thank you. And Yes, and I have an eight-year-old brother. He is a big fan of your books. But um, what I wanted to ask you was... Um, why does it take so long to appeal Obamacare? Well, let me tell you, Sean Spicer is doing the press briefing right out of the White House. And he was asked variation on that question. Uh, and InfoBabe in the press corps said, are you happy with, uh, with, with the president saying that it might not be 2018 or might be 2018 before we can actually do anything meaningful on the repeal of Obamacare. It was the president did say that. And Spicer right. said, look, we have not changed our minds on repeal and replace, but that is a monstrous piece of legislation. It's over 2,000 pages. The Democrats spent their lives writing it. We weren't even allowed to see what it is, what it was, until it was passed. He reminded people, Pelosi said, we have to pass it to find out what's in it. And so he was saying that dismantling this is going to be a huge project. You can't just, it's not like a building that needs to be destroyed. You go in and dynamite the thing and raise it. This has to be unwound and unraveled. And here's the sticking point, Rita. Then okay. this is their sticking point. Their sticking point, What what is being said about this? Well, now, wait a minute. There are 20 million Americans who have insurance through Obamacare, and you can't just take it away from them. What is going to happen if you just go in there and blow it up and take away their health insurance? There are 20 million Americans who didn't have health insurance before Obamacare, and now they do. Now, I don't even know whether the number is accurate, but the point of the question is asked of Republicans. The, the, the question is basically, how can you be so heartless? How can you be so cruel? How can you take these poor people and have nothing until we give them Obamacare? And now you just want to go in and take it away like you Republicans always do. You just want to take away everything people have. Why? 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 That's the question. That's what that question means. Yeah, because I'm just so sick of the left attacking our president. They just need to step aside and give him a chance. Not going to happen. He's going to have to force them aside. They are not going to willingly step aside. They can't take the chance, as far as they're concerned, that Trump's agenda would succeed. Because if it does, it will blow their, their agenda to smithereens. If Trump's agenda succeeds, he will have just proven the Democrat Party is unnecessary. He will prove that the Democrat Party is not needed. He will prove that their agenda all these years has actually been a drag on this country. They've got every incentive in the world to see that Trump fails, and they're going to do everything they can to make it happen. That's why Trump needs all the allies he can get. He needs all the people standing behind him, reassuring him, giving him confidence to keep his confidence. He needs fellow warriors who want to make this country great again by eliminating all of the dastardly liberalism that's found itself woven into the fabric of our country. It's got to be obliterated. And he's hell-bent on doing it. But he's not going to be able to do it alone. And the and the, I guarantee you this, Pam, if they can ever come up with a poll that's accurate, that shows his approval numbers around 40 or 42 or 45, then you watch. That's blood in the water, and the sharks are going to start circling. And whenever that poll, if it ever happens, they're going to say Trump's already failed. He's lost his voters. He's lost his base. And they're going to say that poll means the American people no longer want what Trump is offering and what he was offering in the campaign. I mean, this is all what they have planned. They can produce that poll anytime they want to. Understand. Right. Not legitimately, but they can, the fake news, fake poll, they can create that poll anytime they want. Trump needs insurance policies. He needs backup and support for when these kinds of things happen. Because the Democrats are never going to give him a chance. They're never going to stand aside. They're never going to say, okay, man, let's see if your ideas work. They're never going to give him the chance because they know they will. The Democrats know that Trump's ideas are going to work. 
They may not like it. They may not, you know, they, Trump is a nationalist and a populist, and he wants to get America out of the world. And of course, they're just the opposite. They want America shrunken to become part of the world and nothing special in the world. Trump wants us to be exceptional and great again and leading the world. They don't want any part of that. But he doesn't have the support group that Obama had. Obama had the media. Obama had, you know, academia, Hollywood, uh, pop culture, loving him, supporting him. Exactly. Trump's got none. He's got nothing but you who voted for him. Right. And himself. And and it's it's a great thing he believes in himself. And it's a good thing that he likes himself. And it's uh, it, it's a good thing that he's undeterred by any of this so far. That I uh, I happen to know. But the, the, to answer your question, Obamacare, the 20 million who have insurance, supposedly. I mean, the truth about Obamacare, it's a disaster. It is unraveling before our very eyes anyway. It will implode on its own weight, as it was designed to do. Uh, Rita, Obamacare's ostensible purpose was to fail with Democrats in charge. So that they can say, hey, we tried all these free market reforms. Hey, we tried letting the insurance companies run the show. Hey, we tried this. We tr Obviously, it doesn't work. We need single payer run by uh, the federal government, which in that scenario would mean the Democrats. That's what was on the agenda. So Obamacare is failing as it is designed to do. There, I mean, the number of enrollees is way below what the projections were. The number of people that have signed up, this 20 million people that have insurance that didn't, I mean, they pull that number out of thin air, and it's designed to make everybody stop. Oh, yeah, that's right. We don't, and, and, and the, the weapon here is this message that the Republicans want to take away health insurance. The Republicans want to take away health care. The Republicans want to deny it. They've got theirs, but they don't want you to have yours. And the Republicans don't want that message out there. The Republicans don't want to get into a fight about the message because in their minds, they can't lose. They can't win fights in the media. I've heard a couple of people say today that Trump is showing the Republicans how to behave. Yes, that was what I considered the great benefit of the Trump campaign. When it all started, the greatest thing about it to me was that Trump was showing you don't have to fear political correctness. You don't have to fear any of these so-called restrictions that the left has put on people. You don't have to avoid attacking the media. You don't have to avoid attacking the president. You can tell the truth and triumph. And I was hoping that it would bleed over and influence the way Republicans began to behave. Because I thought that was one of the real values of what Trump was demonstrating. And I am convinced that that's one of the primary reasons he has so much support and why as long as he keeps doing that, his support's not going to vanish. But in terms of the Republicans learning it, uh, there's some signs, some evidence, but not a lot. I appreciate the call, Rita. I hope that helps. I'll be right back, folks. Well, I just saw it. I just saw Paul Ryan on videotape saying they are going to have the repeal of Obamacare done this year. It's going to be done. We're going to repeal it. The question is, when do we replace it and with what? So he's followed by Jim Jordan from Ohio. By the way, the, the, Republic, the conservative caucus in the House, I mean, these guys are doing great. Do not, do not interpret anything I say about quote-unquote Republicans to... The fact that I think Jim Jordan just said, what do you mean? It's a bad bill. It's falling apart. Get rid of it. And the info baby, well, why don't we replace it with you? Good? It's bad. Whatever ends up is going to be better than what it is, even if it's nothing. We can come up with policies that people can actually afford. The people that have Obamacare now need subsidies for it. The idea that we're getting rid of something that's good is absurd. It's falling apart. It's a bad deal. Repeal it. And I have to agree with it. All this talk about, well, but why don't we replace it with, you know, Susan Collins is one of her partners in crime has got a compromise bill that will say, if you like your Obamacare, you get to keep it. She's dead serious. And, and she's proposed that as being part of any kind of a repeal and, and reform. Well, you can't do that. The bill is bad. Obamacare is bad. Getting rid of it would be good, which is the whole point.